Hello, grade fives, Mr. Nkomo here, grade five NSN tech teacher. Um, we are going to continue the lessons. It has been a very long time without your presence. I hope you're doing well at home. Okay. So today we're going to learn about properties of metals and non-metals. So firstly, I want us to familiarize ourselves with keywords. The first one is property, the second one is materials. And I said property is a quality of a feature of material that never changes. And materials, the substance something is made out of or what it can be made from. So taking from two keywords, um, I want to give a practical example. Say for example, when you are asked to say, what is this? And you say, or say for example, we say it's a glass or maybe say this is a stick. You need to have reasons as to why are you saying it's a glass and why are you saying it's a stick. Maybe for example, if I'm asked to say, why are you saying this is a stick? Because I'll say it has been taken from a wood, which is an adaptable, versatile material, and this is a glass. I know one quality of a glass because if I leave it down, it will brittle or it will break down. Okay, so same applies to metals and non-metals. We need to know the properties of metals and know the properties of non-metals. Then it takes us to the questions that I've just formulated here to say, how can we tell if something is made out of, met of metal or, or a non-metal? And how do we decide what material to use when we want to make or build something? So firstly, if we, under we fully understand that every material has its own property that makes it unique from other materials. And then when we know that, I mean, materials have different, I mean, properties which stays forever, they can never change. If the same property that, I mean, this stick has, it will have it up until, I mean, years to come, it will never change, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so how do we decide what material to use when we want to make or build something? Maybe we look at materials, I mean, properties of materials like the long-lasting of material, the durability of material, and whether it will, ex I mean, uh, withstand any diverse, of, diverse kind of pressure exerted upon it. Okay, let's quickly get into details. All right, so firstly, we're going to look at metals, and secondly, we're going to deal with non-metals. So like I said, property is the quality of materials and the features that they have that they can never change. So the first property that I want us to focus on is ductility. So when we talk about ductility of material, its material can be rolled out into thin wires. Okay, so like, let me give you a practical example. Like this wire, it has been taken from a material or a metal and it was able to be rolled into thin wires. That's what ductility means. All right, and maybe we need to think about the extraction of gold from mines. Gold is extracted from the, its raw material and it can be used in different ways. Maybe say for example, we have, I mean, a thin wire of, as an electrical conductor and or maybe we'll get to, I mean, electrical conductivity as a property on its own, but I was just trying to highlight to you. Okay, the first property is that ductility. Let's get to the second one. And we said metals are non-renewable. Like I gave example of extraction of gold earlier on. So we mine gold from, I mean, we, we get gold from mines or we extract gold from mines. But then once we have extracted gold, we cannot find them where we found them before then because it will just leave a loophole there and there's nothing to cover them. So which means we cannot go back where we have extracted gold and extract it again and use it again. Therefore, then that leads us to our second property of metals, which is non-renewable. So once we have mined materials or whatever metal that we've been mining, we cannot go back and mine it again. All right, then we said metals are mined from the earth and are called ores. And the, uh, the third, I mean, property of metals, it's electrical conductors. So when we talk about electrical conductivity, we talk about the ability for electricity or the flow of electrons to move through them. 
So if it allows electricity to move from one end to another, which means it has the property of electrical conductivity. Okay, you think about, I mean, where copper wires are used in electrical circuits, and we'll talk more about that when we get to the topic of electrical circuits. Let's continue to the next property. Um, metallic cluster. Okay, when we look at materials from a distance or when we're close to them, we can look at their surfaces. Let me take a piece of metal like this and or maybe say for example, let me take an adaptable versatile material like wood like this. So say for example, you are to explain what lustre is maybe to somebody who has never been into this class. And you want him to clearly understand what are we referring to when we're talking about lustre. When you talk about lustre, we talk about the shininess of material. So only metals have lustre because they are shining from the outside. If you, if you look at this metal, it's shining. And if you look at this wood, it's dull. So I've already given you one I mean, property of non-metals is that they are dull. So let's concentrate on metals. Metals have lustre. Lustre we're referring to the shininess of material. Okay, just quickly look at the next one. And durability. And we said metals are durable. They last for a long period of time and they are strong. Think about this chain. What do we use chains for? Most of the time for heavy objects. Maybe, for example, if we want to tow a car or we want to lift up a heavy object, we use I mean, materials like chains because they are very, very, very strong. So durability means that they can last for a long period of time. All right. Let's quickly go to the next property. We're talking about magnetic property. Let me check from all these materials that I have that to check if I do not have a magnet. I have a magnet with me and I have, I mean, five cent coin and I also have a two rand coin. Let's see what is magnetic property. And if I, let me check, and I said from my statement above here, some metals have magnetic property, which means that they can be attracted by magnets. But the word some means that not all of them can be attracted by magnets. Maybe we can make one demonstration or practical to check. Here is a two, two rand coin and a five cent coin. Let's check. It can be attracted by magnet, which means it's true. And this is also a metal, but let's see if it can be attracted by magnet. Oh, it can also be attracted by magnet. And let's see if we have something like copper, like let's use this battery. Can it be attracted by magnet? But not all of them can be attracted by magnet. We have different types of elements or metals. Some can be attracted by magnet, like I've been demonstrating, but some cannot. Okay. And malleability, say for example, let me, where is that copper wire? Okay, say for example, I have this piece of copper wire. And before, it was straight, say for example, like a ruler. And I want to change or deform its shape. When we talk about deformation, we're talking about changing the shape of material then it allows me to change. Say, for example, I want to make a circle, then I can make it a circle. This is malleability of material. So which means it can be hammered into thin sheets or it can be changed into different shapes. Say, for example, when we extract something like gold from the mines, we find it, maybe say, for example, in this kind of shape, but it can be hammered. When we take a hammer, we can hammer it into thin shapes. That's what malleability means. I think it makes sense. And he said, gold is the most malleable metal. So it allows to be changed into different shapes. Okay, let's look at the next. And this is a fact for we know that in most cases we prefer using metals because metals are strong and they are hard. How do we demonstrate that if I take this metal and I try to bend it down like this? Oh, it's very, very difficult for me to do that. But if I take a stick or say, for example, as a study stick to check whether it's strong or hard, when I do it like this, it brittle or it breaks, 
then it shows that, oh, the next, I mean, uh, property of non-metals is that they break down or they break when they are bent. Okay, so the, the other main, I mean, properties of metals is that they are strong and they are hard. And we said most metals are generally strong and hard. They are difficult to break down into smaller pieces and changing their shapes usually involves a lot of efforts. All right. Thank you. Let's look at the next one. Oh, we are almost now at the table where we have to compare to see the similarities and the differences of metals and non-metals. Let's start with metals, like we've been discussing metals. We said metals are generally solid, except mercury and gallium. So when we talk about, I mean, to say metals are solid, we talk about room temperatures. Remember when we're talking of three state of matter, we said it can be in a liquid, solid, and gas form. So all metals except for mercury and gallium are found in the solid form, whereas non-metals, non-metals are found in all three different, I mean states, or three different states, also correct. And we're also saying here, metals are heavy. Some of metals, when you have to lift them up, it's very difficult to do that. That's one of the properties. Exception, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. These are metals which are not heavy, and non-metals are generally light in weight, like this, so stick or classic, I mean glasses or any plastic, I mean kitchen utensils that we normally use, they are light in weight, okay? And we said that they are hard and non-brittle. Like this is our, our, I mean, demonstrating earlier on to say if you want to bend it down, it's a hard and they are non-brittle, whereas non-metal can easily be, I mean, bro be broken down or brittle, okay? And we also saying solid non-metals are hard but brittle. Like for example, ways I mean, um, I had one example here. Maybe let's use. I mean, a stick like this. When you feel it, you can find that it's a little bit hard. But if you apply a lot of pressure or force on it, it can eventually brittle. That's what we are saying here. They are good conductors of heat and electricity, we have already said that. So which means if metals are good conductors of electricity, non-metals, they are poor conductors of electricity or they can never be classified as conductors of electricity because they do not allow electricity or the flow of electrons to go through them. And they are ductile and malleable, I've already explained that. And what about non-metals? If these ones are ductile and malleable, they are neither ductile, neither or no malleable. So we said when we talk about ductility, we're talking about the ability of material to be rolled into thin layers and malleability. They can be changed or deformed into different shapes or be changed into thin shapes. Okay, let's look at the most important property that we need to understand about metals and non-metals. Metals and non-metals, they have what we call melting point. So the melting points of non-metals are said to be low, whereas the melting points of metals are high. What does that mean? Think about the pots that we use when we cook. We can, I mean, put them under extreme temperature, but they can last, which means their melting point is it's high. And think about when you maybe take I mean, your lunch box and put it on the plate of the stove, what will happen within two to three minutes, they will melt. So that shows that they have a low melting point. And then we also said that they generally produce ringing sound on the collision. Let's practicalize this. If this is a metal and this is also a metal, when you put them together, they do like, like ringing. This is how we, we hear that, oh, somebody is playing with metals. This is the sound that you get from metals. How do we hear that this is not metals? Say, for example, they say, we said from here, they are melting, I mean, they do not produce a ringing sound. When I take this and this, this, you can hear that, oh, this is not a ringing sound because both of those objects that they are playing with, they are classified as non-metals. 
And lastly, we said they are generally lustrous and can be polished. Last year, we talked about the shininess of an object. And what about the non-metals? Non-metals, they do not have lustrous. They are dull. Like I was giving example with an adaptable versatile material and a shiny silver. Let's continue and see. Oh, no, it seems like we are almost at the end of our lesson, but now it's activity time. All right. Firstly, here, I said, number one, you have to record the properties of each object on the table below with a tick. What does that mean? As I was demonstrating to you here, you could realize that this is a metal. You could see which, one, which ones are metals and which ones are non-metals. Like, for example, like a copper wire, coin, nail, cooking pot, knife, fork, chalk, stone, sand, and coal. Then, what you have to do here, you will have to redraw the table as it is, and then you will tick, looking at the properties which are written here. So, say, for example, copper. Is it, is it shiny? If it's shiny, then you will put your tick. If it's not, then you leave it blank. Like you do likewise till you complete your table. Alright. Then let's continue. And the last part of your work. It's classroom activity 1. Then it's on page 73 of your NSN tech textbook. You read the following, uh, the following paragraph. It's a paragraph about the properties of aluminium. And then you answer the questions that follow. Firstly, you will have to tell us the three properties of aluminium. Give two reasons why aluminium is a good material for making cooling cans, and what other material can be used to make a, con I mean, a container for cooling. And lastly, besides cooling cans, what else can aluminium be used for? And that's the end of our lesson for today. Thank you very much. I hope you will enjoy and you will do your work and stay safe.